evolution of Piners, the last decade, has really been defined by the restoration of Piners Number 2. When you're walking the fairways at Piners Number 2 and you know that every great golfer who's ever played the game in the U.S. has walked these fairways, Pinehurst is a living museum. I have maybe the hardest trip of the day already. On the <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can't make this up. With Bill Core and Ben Crenshaw, what they did to restore Donald Ross's masterpiece back to you know the way that he had envisioned it, you know, something very special. Natural, sandy, wiregrass, pine straw areas. It's the sand hills of North Carolina. He literally is the backbone of what Pinehurst is. The greens are diabolical. They think it's left edge and it's actually three, three feet to the right. Double. If I just shave <laughs> off those stupid mistakes, I'm under 100 every round. I don't want to say easy, but easy. The term D-Green applied to a couple people. No, 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 no. Stop, ball! It went in! <laughs> didn't even hit it that hard. You have to worry about where you hit your tee ball. If you miss the fairway, it's going to roll into the hard pan. You, it's a crapshoot. <laughs> I think I just broke my wrist. But Bill and Ben in 2010 and 11 brought Piners back to that aesthetic. I'll be honest, the expectations I had for the boys were slim because I've seen so many players get roasted at Piners number two. You're That ball's gonna have sap on it. Hitting the green isn't the most important thing. It's just missing it in the right place. A little butter knife, actually. Did Briggs want some bread with that butter or what? We all missed the fairway. Ross was able to design a course that's been able to stand the test of time. We keep one eye on the past, but we're taking aggressive steps forward to make sure that we're not left behind. Big day today. Where are the boys at? I'm antsy. Very antsy. Look at it. Look at that green. <laughs> Look at those runoffs. It's impossible. This morning, the four play crew takes on one of the toughest courses there is Pinehurst number two. Hey, Daddy. What's up? What's up? How are you doing? Good. Good morning. Good morning. How are you feeling? I feel great. This would be an unforgettable day, for better or for worse. It'll be interesting. I think we'll remember this one forever. 110. I'm breaking 110 today. That's what I'm going to do. It's going to be it's gonna be a really hard course. I didn't break 110 yesterday. We played an easier course. But I feel great today. What the fuck's going on here? It's Christmas morning. It feels like Christmas morning. Yeah. I took that melatonin shit. How'd it go? Oh, I kept waking up. I had a weird dream. Today. Yeah. I did. Yeah. I kept waking up every three hours. It's yeah. Weird. That was like, bold. It was weird. All right. Throw your body off. <laughs> oh, I got more people don't get to see those legs. Wow. What? 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 Wow. What? <laughs> but we're picking out the outfit for the day. This is a bit of a change. Uh, I usually wear khaki pants, as people know, but I'm going with the blueberry blue pants. I think these are very nice, very stylish. And here we go. Jake, this is the big part. You ready for this? Uh -oh. so, we're, so we're playing, we're playing a very important course today. We're playing Pinehurst number two. The last time we played a very important course was Aaron Hills in Wisconsin. I'm actually playing pretty well. You are. Yeah, no playing. doubt about it. Yeah. Very well. Things are Let's going, go. so the confidence is high. I just, and I shot 102 there. So I decided to break out, which I wore that day as well, the John Deere Classic shirt. I'm wearing that today. It brought me incredible luck, incredible luck. The John Deere Classic shirt gets me going. As Riggs waits for the guys to get ready, he gets a phone call from a friend. Let me talk to the squad. Oh, there's Frank. Is that fucking Kiz? Yeah, it's Kiz. What's up, kids? Getting you dialed in, Frankie, for Friday. Bro, why can't I hit the golf ball? How am I going to play number two right now if I can't hit the ball at the tee? So you're hitting hooks? Hooks. I'm going to send you a drill. What time are you teeing off? 9-10. Oh, you're fucked. <laughs>
I have all these good vibes going into Pioneer's number two. It's a clean slate, new day. Kiz says you're fucked from wherever the hell he is. He's sitting at Palmetto in his golf cart, and he just wants to get in my head. Well, it worked. I don't want the cat out of the bag too early, but everybody should be very worried about the shirt that I'm wearing under this quarter, though. Oh, no. Everybody should be very worried. I think I know what it is. Yeah. JDC? It's on. It's like my Superman cape. It's like my super. It's like the S. You know? <laughs> Bow. I'm ready. I'm excited. Hey, how's it going now? We need a shuttle from Dornick Cottage to number two, please. Off we go. How's it going? On the quick shuttle ride to the main clubhouse, Frankie does some last minute research on the course he's about to play. Yeah, Golf Digest has this as the 10th hardest golf course in America. <laughs> this should be fun. Pulling into the main campus at Pinehurst, it makes your balls tingle. If you love golf, this is the place for you. It's anticipatory. It's just kind of a, it's kind of a you know something incredibly special has to be on the other side of this kind of arrival, and you just can't wait to see what it is. Great. And you're playing two, you said? Yep. yep. Okay. Right. Have thank fun. You. Enjoy your time. We will. Thank you. That first look, when you see that clock, Pinehurst, that stuff just gives me chills. I have chills just thinking about it right now. You know, it's weird when you've seen something so many times online or in pictures or in video. You've watched so many clips from Pinehurst. You remember watching US Opens. And then when you know that that thing that you've looked at is right there, I mean, it is identical to Christmas morning. One of the best things about Pinehurst is how much they embrace their history. You walk into that main clubhouse and all of the walls on all of the hallways are just covered in pictures of golf history, of golf events that have taken place there in the past. It is spectacular. It's a night of the museum, right? You're, you're walking through here, you, you can kind of see the entire transformation and history of Pinehurst in one hallway. Pinehurst has always been you know, the home of American golf, if you will, you know, not to sound cliche since that's the place that I work, but uh, you know, Pinehurst is always a real special place um, for golf. But the 1999 US Open was kind of the reintroduction Piners number two to the world. History is, is what Piners is all about, yet we're not a time capsule. As the Barstool boys check in, they meet the group in front of them who are interested in some action. We, we, have three way. we can do a oh. match of cards. <laughs> Should we match cards? Match of cards? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. definitely. What are we doing, low gross? All right, yeah, let's do uh, low gross. 103 of you. <laughs> right. Hey, that's not my problem. <laughs> Look, if somebody presents me with a challenge, I'm going to take it. So the bet is in, and the boys are off to meet the most important people of the day. Hey, Dylan Thomas. I'm Rick. Good nice to meet you. Trent. Logan, nice to meet you, Trent. I'll be honest. The expectations I had for the boys were slim because I've seen so many players get roasted at Finders number two. Uh, it gets in a lot of people's heads. Tough moment when the size I usually get just doesn't fit me. It's <laughs> like so you're ready to rock and roll today. I gotta go back and get another size. Look at this thing. I wanted to wear a Pinehurst belt. That is incredible. Guy goes to put his belt on, it's not even close. Me and my guy Logan, man, we hit it off from the start. At that swing, I don't know how he shot 103, so we'll be doing all right today. Definitely hitting it better today. <laughs> <laughs> It could be a long day, but uh, I didn't hit one good drive at the driving range, which is usually the strongest part of my game. So the 110 prediction I made this morning could be very much in doubt, but we're still gonna try our best. And I was expecting big things from my game that day. I did not put on the John Deere Classic to not have a big day. Oh no. <sighs> I did not want this to happen. We are in trouble. There it is, baby. Pioneer's number two. Donald Ross, our friend. Donald Ross designed Pioneer's number two in 1907. And yet it can challenge the best players in the game in 2019. It started when Bill Core and Ben Crenshaw came 
and they took Pinehurst number two back to an era that, that Donald Ross would recognize. The project included the removal of about 35 acres of turf and the reintroduction of hard pan, natural bunker edges, and native wire grasses. Ross once noted that the first hole of any golf course shouldn't be too difficult. Give the player a chance to warm up a bit, he said. There's plenty of room to drive the ball and the hole is not too long. So, time to warm up. If you happen to get a two anywhere on the course, mm -hmm. you can take your scorecard into the Deuce restaurant, they'll give you a little coin to say you had a two on two. Come on, now, okay. Now, anybody who had an eight on eight yesterday, you don't get a coin for that. <laughs> I'd had a pocket full of coins. <laughs> That's the reason why they don't do that. Whoever's ready can go and enjoy your round, guys. Thank you. Always, it's always me. I'm a, I'm a magnetic force. Oh no, Frankie. I don't think that's gonna kill you. Every first tee, I, I dribble the ball. First tee trance. It's, it's like the sun coming up. You know what's gonna happen. Oh no, I've never seen that before. Yeah, that's right. I got nervous. This is, that was a very nerve-wracking tee. Um, I didn't hit a good ball on the range. I didn't hit a good driver. So I kind of saw that one coming, but I think my first tee rain might be over. No problem. I just got to chip over a bunker. I see where my ball ends up on the first hole of Piners number two. I know it's going to be a problem. Got a birdie look on one. Not my best first tee shot. I'll take that. I have maybe the hardest chip of the day already on the one. I mean, you can't make this up. Frankie's ball is there. He's got to chip over that bunker. And have it land soft. If I'm going to be honest, when you had that chip on number one, I thought there was about a 10% chance that we'd stay on the green. The correct move would be for my game to put that ball up away from the bunker, just to the middle of the green, get it up there, and get it away from any sort of um, damage. But then there's the other side that's like, why don't we attack our demons head on? and Let's figure out how to hit this shot. Over a bunker at Pinehurst with a 58 degree on a tight lie that you've never seen is nearly impossible. Bladed it. Butter knife. Butter knife! <laughs> that's what we see every day. <laughs> You all happy now? This is what I have to do. This is why I'm playing here, so that I can fucking do that. We made it. We had a little bit of an adventure through the sand, but we made it. Kill it. Double. You can't, you can't dribble the ball off the tee, blade your wedge, and not make a six. Thank you. Even through one, another hot start. So now that we're clearly warmed up, we move to number two. It's a long par four and played as the most difficult hole in the 2005 U.S. Open. A drive favoring the left side of the fairway will offer the best look at the green. Beauty. That's the tempo we're looking for. But before we get there, let's figure out what we're playing for. Skins are on the left, 15, 14, to 7. I'm two under for the Carolina Cup. Frankie's 11 over, Trent's 28 under. I'm one up on them best ball, playing against them for losers, have to caddy at the cradle today for the producers. And then in our match against the guys from the pro shop, who are two groups in front of us, our best ball, we're even par with a four. So there's a lot of hot action on the card. We got out. Uh, yeah. We got out. Oh, fuck. Pure caddy moment right there. We're like, we were talking over like the eight or the seven. He, he shoots the pin at the end. It's 166. We switched to the seven because I'm not that loose yet. Get a shot, draw it. Now we're, now we're putting, baby. Green Let's make bag. a putt. Like a birdie. When you have a caddy that brings that kind of energy and has that aura where he makes you feel like he's on your team. 
I feel a potential bromance brewing between Frankie and Logan. But we'll play it out as Riggs tries to get on here. That gone? Yeah. Thought that was a really good chip. You know, you were in the right spot, but you might have forgot where I said anything short is best. He found out immediately on the second hole that he was dealing with a stubborn golfer in myself because he told me precisely what not to do on number two, and then I just did that multiple times. That guy, his caddy, caddy for Tiger, he's a legend. The most nervous I've been uh, was when I caddied for Tiger, and here we are in 05. He's at the top of his game. The first hole, it's foggy. You can't see 50 yards in front of you. So he asks, of course, where to hit it, and all you can see are the tree lines you know, about 50 yards in front of us. So you tell him just hit it down between the two tree lines. So he stripes it. So we walk out to his ball. Now, the first hole, it's, if you don't have a pin sheet or you don't have the flag color system, it's very hard to tell whether it's a middle flag or a back flag. I have the middle of the yardage, middle of the green yardage, and I'm not sure if it's a back flag or front flag, or middle flag. And so uh, he pulls out his rangefinder and he's trying to shoot it. Well, he can't hit it because it's too foggy. And so, of course, he looks at me and is like, well, what is it? You know, and I had 110 to the middle. And I hate to say it, but I kind of guessed that it was a back flag. And so before rangefinders, we would know exactly where the pin was by adding or subtracting, just knowing the depth of the green. So I added eight yards, so I gave him 118 yards to the flag. And so he hits, you know, it disappears because of the fog. So when we get probably about 30 yards from the green, he's pin high just left of the flag. And so it's just, I mean, the sweat was pouring down my head. I kind of wiped my forehead. I shoo. <laughs> so right away, like I'm sizing up Thomas and then he's sizing up me. And after the second hole, we know who's right and who's been wrong. And that was kind of the precedent for the rest of the round. Welcome to Pinehurst. It's a raising set. Welcome to Pinehurst, Riggs, as we head to number three. 1999 U.S. Open champion Payne Stewart made three birdies in four rounds on this short par four. Play for position off the tee short of the bunker that creeps into the fairway on the right. conservative on the approach shot. Over the green is trouble, but too short might be more. Oh, oh. you got to be kidding me. Not bad. Frankie has trouble getting out, while Trent introduces us to a new oh, term. Yeah. The term degreen applied to a couple people in our group. I was not all that familiar with the term degreening before we got to Pine Nurse number two. When I hit the putt, you can hear a couple guys behind me say, oh, pretty good putt. So I'm thinking I'm in a good spot. No, no. And then it just whoosh. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Stop, ball. Stop, ball. It went in. It went in. <laughs> Dude, that wasn't even close to going in. If you're on the green or just off the green, putting onto the green, and then after your putt, you're back off of the green. It's more like a green visited. Look at him, he's devastated, man. Uh, didn't even hit it that hard. I didn't even hit it that hard. The first D green. Oh, wow. Trent, that's a great shot. What a shot. Thank you. That was, I Get can't believe that. Can't believe that. Oh. You almost did it again. Gave it a good effort with a, with a shit lie. I should be happy with a six after putting it off the green going into the bunker, because normally I can't get out of the bunker, but boy would I have loved that one to drop. The fourth hole is a par four classic Donald Ross design and reachable for the long hitters. 
Need to come back over here for my man Frankie. Favor the left side with your tee shot to allow for the slope of the fairway. Yes. And I just hit it further than race. That's what happened. Small sample size, but you know if I keep hitting them good, I think I'm, I'll be I'll persevere every single time. When I get a hold of one, I'm just the big dog. But for the average player, it will play as a three-shot hole. Be cautious of the bunkers approaching the green on opposite sides of the fairway. That was amazing. That was amazing. Well, nine iron, a little bump. Oh, go. Frankie, Frankie. Yes. Good try. What'd you make? So that's a, that's a uh, push. On the par five fifth hole, we aren't allowed to fly a drone from tee to green, but it's on the left side of your screen. It was on this hole during the 2014 U.S. Open, Martin Kamer made a historic eagle en route to winning his first major championship. Favor the right side with your tee shot. Oh, oh. The, the kick of the century. It hit the top <laughs> of the trees on the right and bounced right into the middle of the fairway. Since this fairway slopes severely from right to left. Left, four left. Oh, work. Yeah, Trevor, you got another fairway. Oh. Ball, Trevor. Yeah. Beauty, buddy. Yep, we're good. We're still in the fairway. You know, the hardest green, in my opinion, is, is the fifth hole. Everybody knows that green that you can't miss left. Go, go, go. Uh -oh. Keep an eye on this one. Why? Zoom in on that thing. thing. Get, a, get that thing rolling. He said, keep an eye on this one. The green sits like this when you're looking at it, when you're walking down, but it's actually like this. And once you're on the green, I've seen more people de-green themselves than any other hole. Oh, wait a minute. It's a motherfucker of a hole. All right. Any miss shot to the left will leave you with a very demanding up and down like Frankie right here. You got to give it a little more than you think. Dude, I feel like I feel thought. like the end of the world is right behind the pin. This is crazy. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be right down by. This is the this is the most horrifying putt I've ever had to putt right now. This one. It's not enough, huh? Is that thing gonna go all the way off the green? Go up there and stay. Wow, yeah, that's good putt. Good. That's good. That's amazing Great putt. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> for par. Yeah. Okay. Go right through? Right. We got through it. Yeah. Bang. I got Pinehurst. I got Donald Ross. I got fucked. That's really what you call it. Yes, Trent Daddy. That's a par. Hell of a par. That's baby. a par, man. There you go, Trent. That's Come a par. on. Uh, when Trent made par on five, I recounted his strokes and thought he had six. I was so shocked. The par three six was the sixth most difficult hole in the 2014 U.S. Open. For pros and amateurs. It's a long iron or a fairway wood, ideally shaped a little from right to left, which means for the guys, it's a prayer. Wow. <laughs> Nothing to it.
Bunkers catch anything hit a little offline, and a severe slope off the front of the green spits back any shots short of the hole. After five and six, the seventh hole offers a bit of a breather. This is the sharpest dog leg on the golf course. Anything left of the fairway puts you in a waste area with a long iron in. It's skin time. We're, trying, we're coming for some skulls. All right. A cluster of bunkers on the right can grab tee shots that are pushed or leaked there trying to cut it off like rigs. I hit a pretty good drive. I ended up in kind of a, a tricky lie, but it was playable. I hit a bad one. I hit another bad one. I hit a worse one. Frankie, I think, chirped me. Did Riggs want some bread with that butter or what? Boy, oh boy, was that a blade. He's playing like number 15 already. And now, anytime you hit a short game shot that Frankie Borelli is chirping, you're in a house of horrors. And that's what happened. I think I made a massive score, and you kind of knew at that point that the round's over. Once again, when you finally make it to the green, it doesn't always mean you'll stay there. As soon as the ball came off the face, I said, oh shit, that's gone. Trent, no! No, Trent! Come on! Oh, Trent, daddy, no, 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 no! no. Man, this course. Dang. Boy, oh boy. Dang. Boy, oh boy. Ah. Thought there was no way I was going to make worse than a five there, and we left with an eight. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo! -hoo -hoo. At that moment, I was pretty confident that I was going to be degreening pretty much all day. The eighth hole par five from the white tees plays as a par four for the U.S. Open, just to put it in perspective. I'm surprised he didn't just <laughs> take off. I'll be the drone today. And speaking of perspectives, what just happened to Trent? At the end of the day, Trent Daddy ends up shooting like 104, 103. He's going to remember parting for par and end up with an eight. Like, that's four strokes you gave away for no fucking no reason. No reason. Just hit the ball stop. Just, I thought I did. He took five bucks. It's just like, my world came crashing down. Ooh. <laughs> I think I just broke my wrist. <laughs> let's just take a time. Let's just take it. Let's just take a time out on that practice swing. The biggest challenge to Frankie's game is to keep his confidence up because he'll hit a great shot and he'll be standing over the ball and he'll chunk a practice swing and he'll lose all confidence that he's had for the last three holes. Go. Approach shots missed left or long will make for a difficult up and down. Stay right there. No, 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 no! Oh, would have been such a good distance. The green is dramatically sloped from back to front, which apparently Riggs is comfortable with. Go in. Want a pot? Yes! Oh, oh, oh. Nice. oh shit. Where's Birdie at uh, number two? That turns things around. What did I tell you, Jake? Woo. What did I tell you? We're back. I'm scared. <laughs> All right. I'm in eight on the last hole. Yeah. Wow. Oh, Beauty. Beauty. Yup. You know what the fuck you're doing, Logan. I'm your sheep. You lead me the way, Messiah. Oh, 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 you walk and you walk that thing off. Spat in your Iowan face. Now walk off the green. You don't deserve to stay on this green. You tried to walk that thing in and spat it back out your face. Keep going. I was emotional. I was angry. Ah! 
and I could just feel it slipping away from me. I had a putt. I, uh, I had a putt, and I just didn't make it. It just it rimmed out, and I, I I walked it in like it was going in, and it didn't go in. And it's just everything's falling apart ever since I made that eight on the last hole. I can't putt. I don't know what's going on. Fuck. The par 3 ninth is the shortest hole on the course, but don't let that fool you. Club selection is essential. Most of the trouble lies to the left and behind the putting surface. And the two-tiered green is wide and shallow, sloping from left to right. A tough hole, especially when you can't forget about the last one. I wanted to walk back to Iowa. I wanted to go see my mom. It's I wanted the first time I've seen you do that early step like that. I wanted to talk to my mother and be Cup like, hated. things are tough right now. I just lipped out this putt in North Carolina and I walked all the way here. Let's check in on Frankie and Logan. Beauty. I'm yours for the rest of the round, baby. Like you give me those numbers and I'll 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 do my best. Yep. Still there. We are fried, boy. off the edge of a cliff. Oh. Another chance of one here. Yep. Got it. Yeah. Frankie with a uh, 45. Me with a 47. Trent Daddy with a 54. Except 110. The par 5 tenth is the longest hole on the golf course. It may be reachable in two for some players, but certainly not the four play guys. Uh -oh. Come on back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A good drive in a fairway wood should leave a wedge or short iron into the green for a birdie try. The second shot must steer clear of a bunker on the left side of the fairway about 110 yards short of the green. And now that the round is about halfway through, let's recap. Here, how much? Three down. Three down to me and Trent as a team. So yep. just to recap, we're here on hole 10. The loser of Trent and I as a team versus Riggs uh, has to carry the producer's bag around the cradle. So he's got to carry all their clubs. Caddy for him, re -putts. Mm -hmm. He's just got to be their little bitch boy. I got to, uh, I gotta step the fuck up. I need to beat these guys. Oh, just come out. No! Get away with it. Too short of it. Alright. Shot. Uh, putt here for par. Uh, treacherous. Looks like it's gonna go 400 miles per hour. How many D greens? I've got two D greens right now. Super Thank you bad. for the reminder. <laughs> Too hard. Oh my goodness. Oh no. See, like, that's just the difference in my brain and my in my hand sometimes is crazy. If I just shave off those those stupid mistakes, if I shave those off, I'm I'm under 100 every round. I don't want to say easy, but easy. Whoa, whoa, there, Trent. If anything, maybe you should take it easy. The 11th is the start of a critical stretch of four par fours. The fairway appears wide, but is bordered down the right and left side with a traditional Pinehurst trademark: hard pan sand wire grass, pine needles, and pine cones. Fairway is a must. Never go straight. We all miss the fairway thing. <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> the safe approach shot is to the right center portion of the green like that. Come on down. But it isn't easy. Just ask Frankie. The shrieks of a psychotic man. <laughs> I can't do it, man. <laughs> can't like, I duffed wedges, I was sculling shit. Does ever say. So skins are four Trent, four Briggs, two Frank. We got a carry over here on 12. The 12 hole has a subtle dog leg to the right and requires an accurate tee shot. With more hard pan sand and wire grass framing the right and left side of the fairway. A left center tee shot affords the best angle into the green. Sucked off like me. Fuck me. Oh, man. Run. Get through. Go. Ha <laughs> Meanwhile, Logan lines up Frankie for a big par putt. You want to talk about top feelings in the world? It's when you drain a long putt. Massive par save. You fucking kidding me? Especially after your caddy had just given you the perfect spot. The bromance continues. All right, Riggs, your turn. You kidding me? Holy shit! Is that a par save? Par save. Oh man! Show me the line, Frank. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Trent, if you put this in, we're going streaking. <laughs> I'm a team player. I like to watch my guys do well. I like positive vibes only, everybody having a good time. So yeah, I was feeling the pressure. Wanted to get in on that hole and make a nice putt. <laughs> but of course, it did not happen. Damn. As we come off 12 green, we look at the 13th hole. It is a classic short par four and far from a pushover. Your tee shot must avoid the fairway bunkers on the right. Club selection is crucial because an approach shot hit even slightly short will roll back down to the fairway. 13 is everything that you kind of needed to know about like the foreplay, common golfers, taking on Piners number two. Oh no, Frankie! No, no, no. Oh, you asshole. Yes, sir. It was inevitably going to lead to us exposing ourselves for everything that we are. Four! Get out. Hit. It's a fucking sideshow here now. We got, we got Frankie's got, uh, that's like a mountain range over there. Between him and the hole, there's like four different hills. Trent Daddy's up here in the Pine Hill. That's not gonna do it. Nope. It's not gonna do it. Hey, we gotta give it another ride. <laughs> Wait. I have no idea how much it takes to get to the No! Oh. It's like you took a short game lesson. You're getting all this English on your chips. Um, the English is unplanned, but I thought that was over, over, and I was ready to pick up my ball. But put a little English on it, you know, for the people at home, accidentally. A little English. A little English, I'll put a little English on the ball. Is that English? In that moment, I knew that we had been fully and completely defeated. 
and it felt good. This scenic tee shot on 14 must favor the right side of the fairway. That will avoid the deep fairway bunker on the left and the set of four fairway bunkers on the right. Approach shots missed right or long will make for a challenging up and down. This classically crowned Donald Ross green, protected by two bunkers, is severely sloped from back to front. There and negative one. Ooh. What a shot. <laughs> Logan had me dialed in. There's no other way to say it. Like, I am an erotic golfer. I'm a mental disaster. I can't think the right way on the golf course ever. Thank you. Holy shit, I'm giddy after that one. That's probably the best fairway bunker shot I've ever hit. good to have a guy on your team. It feels good. It feels like you're playing for something, even though you're really just playing for yourself. Par, triple par. We're grinding out here at number two. Grinding. Ooh. Back up two. Yep. You guys are back up two. That's huge. That's huge. That was a huge, huge, huge missed putt. Huge, huge, huge mate. Well, you had a stroke, so I, you won by two. Four and a three. Even better. 15 is a long, difficult par three for any player. From above, you can see missing left or right leaves you in the sand. If anything, favor the front portion of the green since up and downs are easier from the front of it versus behind it. Case in point right here. The 16th hole is a par 5 for resort play, but plays a par 4 for the 2005 U.S. Open, making this the second most difficult hole that week. The only water on the course is here as well and usually doesn't come into play. Ooh. No. Get up. Go. Get up, ball. It's got to go. Get up. Oh, yeah, that's it. Also, the bromance is in full effect now. We got this one, I think. Yeah. After you clear the water, the key element is to avoid a hidden bunker on the left of the fairway, near where your second shot should land. Big Z, big Z, big Z. On the green, a big miss from Riggs opens the door for Frankie. This would end the match here, this putt. So this is a massive, massive putt for par. We're gonna leave it just inside the left cup. Nope. Come on. Relax. Riggs is two down with two to play, heading to the par three 17th. This hole played a pivotal role in the outcome of both the 1999 U.S. Open, with Payne Stewart making a dramatic birdie, and the 2005 U.S. Open when Michael Campbell sealed his victory with the birdie. Right side hole locations are the most difficult, so you have to take enough club. Oh, oh come on, ball. Oh. 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 
That's a puking sound. Wah, wah, wah. Because that's what I was doing all over the course of that day. I was puking all over the place. Wah. That's just so awful. Really amazing. Green right now. Off the green, go, go off the green. The green doesn't want you. Go back to Iowa. Maybe a fucking track the trailer pick you up on the way back. Get the fuck out of here. Frankie said some mean things after I missed that putt. He early called. Dude. 15 feet short. Trent's got more rim jobs than Ron Jeremy. I mean, it go. It went all the way around. It went all the way around the world. Everywhere. We went all the way, all the countries. Oh, there's Africa. Oh, there's Europe. Oh, there's Antarctica. There's Australia. There's Japan. That's a joke. That's a joke. Trent early called multiple putts that hit the back of the cup and plopped out. And it was robbery. Good putts, not rewarded. Frankie makes par, which means... We won. We beat Riggs. <laughs> you know, bless you. bless you. Thank you, guys. Um, I got a carry, carry. I got a caddy for the uh, for the producers. At the cradle, it's like the thing he's been looking forward to the most in the world. Like he's been like the cradle. He bought a cradle belt. I'm fairly confident that Riggs hates losing more than I like winning. So this win against Riggs felt really good. Really, really good. I knew I deserved to lose. I didn't play well. When you play bad golf, you deserve to have bad things happen to you and. Tons of bad things happen to me all day long. Tons. Just a fucking relentless barrage of bad things happen to me all day. And it felt right that that would be yet another really bad thing that would happen to me. You walk off 17 and onto one of the most famous holes in golf. 18 on Pinehurst number two. You take any photo, just show it to a golfer and they just know that's where you're at. And that 18th tee at Pioneer's number two is one of them. How does Payne Stewart even take the putter back? I don't know how you, the, the weight of the world is on his shoulders. He's got an 18 foot putt for par to win the U.S. Open. Payne Stewart is the 1999 U.S. Open champion. Oh my, what a clutch putt. Avoid the long, deep fairway bunker down the right side off the tee, and you'll have a mid to short iron into the green. You want to finish strong? Very few do. I don't think any of us did, but who cares? Oh! Oh! Cut that tree down. You're <laughs> fine. That ball's gonna have sap on it. I think it just exploded. <laughs> I'm not kidding, the ball could be just in half. Great song. What a tease. What a tease. We're looking for just nothing. Ooh, that's gonna kill somebody. Four. Ooh. Ooh, lady. Frankie has affected everyone. It's intimidating because you know people are sitting out there watching, they're having a little lunch. They're betting, they're gambling with their buddy, they're going, hey, I bet, look at this guy back there with that flat swing, there's no chance this hits the green, I'll go five bucks, he misses the green. You know that's going on everywhere. Oh, no. You gotta make that one, boy. It's hard to play good golf when you can't get the ball in the hole. And I just couldn't get the ball in the hole that day. It's one of the hardest courses in the country, and I learned why that day. I just couldn't get the ball in the hole. Spectacular golf course, but it kicked the shit out of me. Get me out of here. Kicking the ball in the hole. The ball in the hole. I felt pretty goddamn good about the way I played. Those greens, man, like, the videos don't do it justice. You gotta be there to see 
the undulations and like you tap this ball and it goes from right to left like you've never seen before. Um, so I felt pretty good about that, man. Like I thought Logan had me dialed in and I played the golf course respectively. But that feeling is why you play. I mean, that's why you do it. That's why you come all the way down to Pinehurst. That's why you pay whatever it is. That's why you stay at the resort. That's why you take all the pictures is to have that feeling of, all right, this is like bigger than playing the 18th hole at my home course or the 18th hole at my local track down the street or any 18th hole really anyway for that feeling. And this is exactly what you get at Pinehurst. And it's just the best. It's why we play the game. And one more time, just for good measure, Frankie, how was Logan today? Logan was an unreal caddy. The guy just read every single green for me. You know, I had a couple bad lies today, a couple bad shots, but I shot a 92. Yesterday I shot 103, so came back a little bit stronger. Felt good about my game. I felt good about this golf course. Awesome layout. Awesome place. I couldn't have felt worse about my game after how well I played yesterday. I played horrible today. Everything I did was bad. Everything. I played well on the front, and then I did not play well on the back. So Riggs lost one match already, but what about the group from the pro shop? Oh no. So we double 18 to shoot 80. Oh. We birdied to shoot 78. Wow. We birdied it to shoot Three 78. Three shots swing on 18. Yeah. Massive. No Birdie's the, I mean, who the hell birdies the 18th hole at Pirates number two in a, a match against us? That's just not supposed to happen. So that sucked. You know, we have heard a lot about the greens about the tight lies, about the chip and turtle back. Turtle back. Turtle back greens, eggshell greens, they call them. Donald Ross eggshell greens. And I mean, they delivered. Some of the parts of the course feel like, like clown golf, where it's like, if I don't get lucky here, and I don't hit the windmill at the right spot, it's just coming right back at me, and like the clown's laughing. I mean, at one point my caddy said, you have one option, it's to hope and pray that this ball stays up there. Uh, how is that supposed to be any skillful golf? He said that. Yeah, he goes, you have to hope and pray this ball stays up. <laughs> I said, how does this have any skill? I mean, there are areas that are rewarding. Yes, there are. And yeah. I found myself, you know, it's not, it's not impossible. If you hit your approach shots and your shots from the fairway into certain spots and you listen to your caddy and you go up below the hole and stuff like, you're going to find yourself in situations where you can make a score. I just wanted to not roll at 100 miles an hour off the green. Put it so, off the green a couple times. I would play it again. But it, I mean, I'm gonna have gray hairs because of it. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I would play it again. I liked it more than number eight. Me sure. too. I Me liked too. it like an infinite amount more. It might be because of the prestige of it. But yeah, we played number two. We ate at the deuce. Now I'm about to go up in Donald Ross's old cabin and take another deuce right now. Boy, my nice. my fault. Yeah, I gotta shoot. All right, all right. That's a good ending. Good job, Frank. <laughs>